welcome to Holy Cross Faith Memorial Episcopal Church. I'm Marsh Dean, the videographer here. I hope you're having a wonderful Independence Day, and I hope you enjoy this 4th of July service. Soon, I'll be live streaming from the church every Sunday at 8 a.m., and I look forward to seeing you all there in person. Today, I'm going to be flying my drone up the coast with camera in hand and filming different parts of Georgetown County. I look forward to seeing y'all out there and sharing that with y'all later. But until then, enjoy this worship video, and I hope you have a wonderful 4th of July. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit, that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The Lord said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. 
I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord. Whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm 123 together. To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens. As the eyes of the servants look to the hand of their masters, and the eyes of the maid look to the hand of their mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God until he show us his mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, have mercy. For we have had more than enough of contempt too much of the scorn of the indolent rich and of the derision of the proud. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body I do not know, God knows, was caught up into paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but not on my own behalf. I will not boast except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weaknesses. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me, and therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is his wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is this not the carpenter? the son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their own hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. And then he went about among the villages teaching, 
he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed all that should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Good morning. Folks, rejection is no fun. Chances are, like me, you know this from personal experience. This life provides ample opportunity to be rejected by a variety of people and institutions. We get rejected from colleges, fired from jobs, turned down from mortgages, dumped by girlfriends or boyfriends, unfriended on Facebook, divorced by spouses, and estranged from family. Rejection runs rampant, and rejection is no fun. Now, it's one thing to be rejected by a faceless institution for, say, like a credit card application, but it's another thing to get rejected by people we know and love. And this is exactly what happens to Jesus in this morning's gospel reading from Mark. He returns to his hometown of Nazareth after a wildly successful time out in the mission field. As we've heard over the past few Sundays, he's had recently stilled a, a raging storm, driven out demons from a possessed man, healed a hemorrhaging woman, and saved a little girl from the brink of death. Now, if that wouldn't build up your confidence, if that wouldn't make you feel pretty darn good about yourself, I'm not sure what would. This new ministry was rolling right along. Jesus is changing lives and saving souls, amazing all sorts of people with his divine power and wisdom. And he may have figured, why not head home for a little R&R? You know, check in with the parents, eat a good home-cooked meal, maybe get some laundry done, bask in the glow of his newfound success. So Jesus returns to his hometown of Nazareth. Now, you'd think that his family and friends would have welcomed him home like a conquering hero. Local boy does good. Let's roll out the red carpet and have a party. The kind of treatment that I'd imagine Darius Rucker gets when he comes to town. I mean, let's face it. Jesus put Nazareth on the map, but as we just heard, it doesn't quite turn out that way. Now, maybe the people of Nazareth felt that Jesus had just gotten too big for his britches. Maybe they were jealous of his newfound wisdom and power. Maybe they resented his presumption. However, the why, rather than pride in their native son's accomplishments, the people of Nazareth took offense at Jesus's ministry of teaching and healing. Familiarity breeds contempt, as Chaucer has written. But in their anger and indignity, his family and friends, at least in one sense, were right. This was the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon. But he was and is so much more. He is the Messiah, the son of God, the brother of Peter and Paul and you and me. It wasn't a case of mistaken identity, for they knew full well that this was the same Jesus of Nazareth that they had watched grow up and move away. But it was a case of missing or of a mistaken relationship. For the same Jesus was for them and for us the Christ, the anointed one, the Savior and Redeemer of the world, and they rejected him. But as hurtful and as painful as this rejection must have felt to Jesus, I can't help but believe it strengthened him. I say that because I feel that I have been strengthened by that as well. It probably didn't hurt in his preparation for the ultimate rejection by humanity that is the cross. And for the same reason, I think this episode of rejection brought Jesus closer to God. It forced him to put all of his trust in his heavenly father rather than in his earthly family. This must have been a difficult realization a painful realization. Rejection is no fun. But it often leads to opportunities that we would have never asked for or imagined. According to Mark's gospel, Jesus left Nazareth and called the 12 apostles to assist him 
in his work and ministry. There have made been a recognition out of the rejection in his hometown that he needed more laborers to work for the work at hand. So rejection ultimately strengthened the ministry of Jesus. And it can strengthen us as well. Now I realize that at first glance it seems absurd to equate being rejected with being strengthened. When we're rejected by other people, we feel hurt, angry, unloved. I distinctly remember being a senior in seminary and receiving a rejection letter from the church that was my first choice to work in. I was convinced that I was destined to serve this church, which shall remain nameless, and that my entire future depended on my call there. I had even gone so far as to mentally move my growing family into this little apartment and was all ready to go out and buy a sticker of the local town for my parents' car. I was crushed when I didn't get the job. I felt absolutely hurt, angry, and unloved. The very same emotions that I'm sure Jesus felt when he returned to his hometown. And yet, I cannot say from any certainty that we, this church and I, would have even known each other, much less ministered together. You see, my own plan for myself was thwarted by God's plan for me. And this happens time and time again to each one of us. There's no doubt that to be rejected is to endure suffering. Jesus suffered during his trip back to Nazareth, and we suffer when we're rejected. But being rejected is more than just suffering. When we're rejected, it reminds us that we are not in control of every situation. It reminds us that we must put our trust in God so that the divine plan can be worked out in our lives, not according to our own agendas, but according to God's agenda for us. And this is important for us to remember occasionally. As St. Paul tells us, God's power is made perfect in weakness. We can grow closer to God through the vulnerability that comes with rejection. It is in the very weakness and vulnerability and pain of the cross that we stand as a people redeemed in the light of Christ. The capstone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Our faith is built upon humanity's rejection of Christ. As Christians, we are not immune to rejection. It is very much a part of our existence. But when we're rejected, we are not alone. Christ knows what it means to be rejected, and he stands with us in the midst of that pain. And that's good news. We may not be immune to rejection, but we do not face it alone. Christ stands in solidarity with us in the midst of our pain and walks with us through the rejection to unimagined opportunity and hope. Rejection is no fun. Jesus knows this. You and I know this. But if we look beyond the pain, we might just see God's presence ever more sharply in our lives. We just might be presented with new opportunities to be fulfilled and, and help change the lives of those around us. We just might have our eyes opened to Christ's victory in the world and realize that far from being rejected, we are being embraced by our Lord. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven.
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, may that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Ruth, our bishop-elect, Will and Ryan, our clergy, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joe, our president, Henry, our governor, Tom, our congressman, Tim and Lindsay, our senators, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will, especially in the lakes at Litchfield Ministry and in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. We thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings of this life, especially for the birthdays of Marcia Smith, Bill Snyder, Mason Boyd, Christy Dill, and for the wedding anniversary of Bill and Mason Boyd. Today we offer our prayers for parish members, Jim McBride, Ira Thomas, Katie Harris, Aaron Ulfelder, Libby Lundell, Marcia Kaminsky, Rita Schreier and family, Sue Myers, Alex Spidey, Dot Bonds, Joan Sherman, Ron Engel, Denise Skiles, Christopher Atkins, Jackie Rove, Ryan Smith, Anna Leslie, Bubba Cannon, Alfreda Ellison, Sarah Posey, and Lucille Gray. For friends of this parish who are sick or in suffering, for those serving in the armed services, and for others who protect us at home and abroad, especially Midway Fire Rescue. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we remember the youth of the Diocese of South Carolina and all those associated with youth ministry, remembering those who have graduated and those on summer mission trips and celebrating International Youth Day. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Grant to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord God Almighty, you have made all the peoples of the earth for your glory, to serve you in freedom and in peace. Give to the people of our country a zeal for justice and the strength of forbearance, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your gracious will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. My siblings in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with, always with you. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with loved ones near and far, perhaps by sharing this worship video. 
If you boast in the Lord, boast in this, that God's grace is sufficient for all, and that by his grace the power of Christ dwells in you. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For through your Son, Jesus Christ, you teach us wisdom. By his hands we have witnessed great deeds of power, And by his grace we have been healed of hard hearts and unbelief. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.